uh, I have to apologize for my English. Uh, it's a bit rusty, so so I will be uh, reading my my presentation. This text is part of a broader uh, investigation into the transformation of the agriculture uh, imposed by the Castilian conquest in the rural areas of the Sultanate of Granada. This research focuses on populations in the western part of the former Sultanate, the area corresponding to the post-conquest uh, Bishopric of Malay. Uh, this study allows us uh, to test some of the proposals made by authors such as Andrew M. Watson on the relationship between agricultural models of Muslim in Spain and, the, and that of the Christian repobladores, the settlers, analyzing the behavior of both groups at the local level. Andy Watson highlighted the differences between traditional Andalusian agriculture and that of the colonies in one key aspect, the integration or lack thereof of livestock and agriculture. However, his ideas have been reviewed by other authors uh, recently. Uh, the colonization of the Sultanate of Granada is an ideal scenario to measure and value the differences between the activity of the native peasants and that of the settlers. Uh, as, it, as it is uh, well known, the conquest of the Sultanate uh, of Granada by Castile uh, between 1482-1492 was the beginning of a long and complex process, process of colonization. In the years following the war, around 40,000 settlers arrived to this land. Um, about the indigenous population, although uh, suffering a significant loss, important communities remain in the mountainous areas. In the case of the Bishopric of Malaga, in the, in, the, in the screen, the inner areas of the region remain largely uh, occupied by indigenous communities, in green in the, in the image. We have chosen the small town of Casarabonela uh, in the western part of the district uh, to carry out a detailed research on how this, that transformation took place. Casarabonela came under control uh, of uh, Castile in the spring of 1485. This town stands out for the permanence of most of the indigenous community with a population of 240 households and for the installation alongside to this native population of a group of Castilian settlers, 68 families, in the last years of the 15th century. Both population groups share spaces in a dual community that was maintained until 1570, when the native population, the called uh, Moriscos, was deported to other regions of Castile. Information on the period previous to the Castilian conquest is really scarce. We have to resort mainly to, the, uh, to extrapolating data from the end of the 15th century. Since the only a small part of the large area of Casarabonela was cultivated, among the fields, the irrigated lands stand out. Most orchards and irrigated fields were located around the village itself. The area in, in green in the other small irrigated areas were located throughout the district. Particularly important were the areas of meadows called islands along the river, which could easily be cultivated with cereals like uh, millet, barley, or other plants like beans or flax. Rainfed crops were also present. The cereal fields was, were scattered throughout the area in no very extensive fields. Olive trees grown both on dry and irrigated land were preferably located in the area around the village river. The grapevine, with great commercial importance, was mainly located in the southern part of the district, as uh, we'll, we'll see later. The rest of the territory, which is particularly rough, was occupied by scrapland and forest, being suitable for grazing. <coughs> The arrival of a group of settlers immediately entailed a series of changes in the agrarian landscape. First, they appropriated all the land, houses, and other properties that were considered vacant, those whose owners had disappeared during the war years. Settlers were also granted with uncultivated land, circa 275 hectares, that was considered to be royal property, in order to plant cereals, grapevines, and olive trees. 
The Crown used this donation to reward services rendered during the conquest of the Sultanate. This distribution of land, some cultivated and others yet to be broken, was the basis for the accumulation of land and fields by a few families, especially in the outer area of the village boundary. Now, it's, uh, uh, those lands of uh, Casar in the in the outer area of the of the district had the best soil conditions for the extensive cultivation of staple crops, wheat and barley. In the decades following the conquest, native farmers sold or lost most of their fields in the areas such as Montijar or Turon, and indigenous property was also reduced in the areas of Hakor and Kekunes. Here is an image of the state of the property of the, this guy farming lands. And in 1570, it's the, all the lands are grouped in nine blocks. So we can see that the property was mostly in main on uh, in the hands of the of the new settlers, the settlers. Only a eighteen point five percent of those fields was owned by the native peasants by fifteen seventy. Irrigated land, in contrast, was owned equally between both groups. About the vineyards, the vine, uh, the grapevine, uh, might be considered the other staple group the crop of rainfed agriculture. The export of raisins was key to Nasrid uh, foreign trade. The vineyards in Casaragonela during the Nasrid period were found mainly in some states in the southern part of the village. Settlers showed their, their interest in this crop by rapidly expanding the area dedicated to it, both directly and by encouraging native farmers to plant new vines. In 1522, new land was granted to native peasants to be planted with grape vines in Matime, in the south of the district. That would be the situation of the grapevines in uh, around uh, 1500. Uh, that would be uh, the distribution of grapevines around 1570. That shows a clear enlargement of the land destined for vineyards in the central zone of the municipality, in the Mopaga, Caletin, and Casa areas. And in the southern part, in the border with Alosaina, uh, the so called Matimir and Imajit areas. The surface devoted uh, to the vine crops was close to uh, 200 hectares. Um, by 1570, most of the vineyards of the Nasrid period had been appropriated by settlers, while the new vineyards were mainly owned by the native peasantry. Although wine was produced, most of the grapes were used for the production of raisins, which were sold to merchants in the city of Malaga. In 1545, for example, one of the few years for which we have records, raisin production exceeded the 30,000 kilograms. Information on livestock in Nasri time is rather scarce. The data we have was generated after the conquest, a record from 1489 shows the presence of uh, modest numbers of cattle, oxen and cows, and donkeys. Only in the case of goats, there were six herds that indicate a certain specialization. The options for feeding these livestock were extensive, with a wide area, almost uh, 150 square kilometers, of uncultivated land. In addition to this, there were also dry farming fields used for grazing after harvest and during fallow period. This livestock would have had a limited access to most of the irrigated fields and to the vineyards, especially during the fruit season. The new settlers brought with them their own cattle and their own priorities. The increased pressure on grazing resources with the, anima, with the, arri, uh, with the arrival of large flocks of sheep led to the need to identify areas reserved for the most valuable livestock, graph animals, especially oxen. Two areas can be identified which were, which were especially reserved for this livestock, including within some cereal fields, which could also be used as pasture once the harvest was over. The Martina pasture occupied an area delimited by the Alora and Ronda Road. There were at least two cows reserved for oxen only. The other pasture area, the other pasture enclosure, was marked in the northwest area of the municipality on the border with uh, El Burgo. 
and there animals could water in the river to run itself. Other types of cattle, as goats or sheep, were not allowed, uh, allowed in these pastures. So uh, conflicts between different kinds of livestock, large and animal livestock owners, livestock keepers and farmers were quite frequent. Um, we have it them documented. Cattle access to the farming fields and stable was of great importance and was often reserved by large landowners. This would be roughly the distribution of the fields in Casarabonela at the moment of the expulsion of the Morisco families in 1570, in the spring of 1570. The process of the, the Morisco clearances was a turning point in the history of the Kingdom of Granada. The expulsion of nearly 80,000 people between 1569 and 1571 completely transformed the social and economic reality of many communities. In Casarabonela, or, or <coughs> case, about 350 families were expulsed in the spring of 1570, about the 62% of the population. The Crown's project to replace the expelled population with settlers, the so-called new settlers, intentionally sought to reduce the number of neighbors in the villages to be reoccupied. Only 70 new families settled in Casa de Bonela, receiving most of the properties of the expelled moriscos, irrigated land, the island, vineyards, olive groves, etc. This property was distributed into lots, which were allotted to the settlers, who initially formed a group of small and medium-sized owners. However, they found it quite difficult to live off the farms they have received. The tax pressure to which they were subjected in the early years, which led to a widespread protest in the kingdom and a change in the regulations of the new population. The difficulty of cultivating the distributed land, lack of livestock, dispersion of the fields, etc. This made some of the new settlers to focus on the most profitable crops, especially silk and vines, leaving many lands and fields uncultivated, especially the rain-fed ones. Pressure from big, the big cattle owners, the interest of the large landowners who had already settled in Casarabonela years before and nearby uh, were, were largely based on livestock farming. Because of these difficulties, a significant number of these new settlers left Casarabonela in the years following uh, 1575. Only 30 of the 70 new settlers remained in Casarabonela 15 years after their arrival. As a result of the expulsion, the, the, the expulsion of the natives, the moriscos, and the failure of the new population, Casabornella entered in a period of demographic decline that lasted until the very end of the 17th century. There are some questions that, uh, that may arise from the above and need further research. The role of the work of the native peasants as tenants or braceros, workers for the settlers. The management of fellow, uh, fellow land as possible use by livestock, uh, like, like grazing. The use, of, the use of mills and granaries as a way to intervene the production of the staple crops, especially wheat and barley. And the colonies control over the racing trade. So the local administration of the communal spaces, like pasture and uh, forest, the different tax treatment and levels of debt in both groups as, as conditioning factors of the farming activity, there are questions that will be addressed in the near future, luckily. To summarize uh, this presentation, I would like to say the changes introduced by colonization in agricultural agriculture were focused on dairy farming, especially grain, cereals and vineyards and livestock. The importance of the work of native peasants to fulfill the project of the settlers being tenants or, or workers. It is necessary to study further peasant work to better understanding the different behavior of both peasant groups. The project of new settlement was a partial failure as most of the new settlers did not remain in Casarabona. A local study such as the present one allows us to measure the impact of the productivity priorities brought by the new settlers on the agropastoral areas, to locate the cultivation areas, to measure the, the fields, etc. Thank you very much. Okay.